Okay, let's go ahead and put our calculators away and figure out what the answer is to this problem here. So we have 5 divided by parentheses 8 times 4 divided by 16 and parentheses squared. What is this equal to? Well, hopefully this is not too difficult of a problem. But if you don't understand the order of operations, unfortunately, you're going to get this wrong. But I suspect a lot of you know what you're doing here, and that is fantastic. Matter of fact, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second, and then we are going to review how to properly use the order of operations to figure this uh, problem out. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. It really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. If you're not ready to see it just quite yet, just put this video on pause, but let's go ahead and see the answer to this problem. The correct answer is five fourths or five over four. Now, if you wrote that as a mixed number fraction, that's fantastic. If you uh, actually did the division and turn this into a decimal, that's cool as well. But this is the answer that I'm looking for. This is the easiest, most simplest way to express the final answer. Okay, now if you didn't get this right, no problem. I'm gonna explain exactly how to do this problem. But if you did do this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in the order of operations. They'll be extremely impressed with that information indeed. All right, let's go ahead and get into this right now. So this is one of the most basic kind of math concepts that I think a lot of students, you know, don't fully uh, appreciate or don't fully understand. Let's quickly review it real quick. All right, so you can see here I have a phrase. Now, uh, just as a little aside, um, most people, you know, from my experience, and kind of been doing this for decades, are familiar with this uh, phrase here. Now, there's other phrases that are effectively are communicating the order of operations, but this is uh, by far probably the most popular phrase. It's P-E-M-D-A-S, and there is a little mnemonic, which is a little kind of uh, memory aid, um, a little uh, way you can kind of remember this phrase, and that uh, is... Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse my please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now I don't have an Aunt Sally, but you know, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but yeah, that's the phrase I could tell you right now. Many of your great grandparents were using this um, you know, uh, little mnemonic and PEMDOS way back in the good old days. All right. Well, but what does it mean though? Well, it means this uh, we have to follow this as a checklist, okay? Uh, because we're dealing with various operations here. Now, what is a mathematical operation? Well, uh, when you could take two numbers, what can you do with two numbers? Well, we can add them, we can subtract them, multiply, divide, we can even take powers. These are examples of mathematical operations, okay? Unlike medical operations, you know, we have an order to, um, uh, you know, doing problems that have multiple different type of operations in them. So here we have division, multiplication, division. We have um, powers and parentheses. We need to know where to start, right? Because if we just start in any some random place, we're going to get different values. So we need to know the exact checklist here of what to do, and that's PEMDAS, okay? All right, let's quickly go through it. P stands for parentheses, okay? But it's not just parentheses like these parentheses here. Uh, of course, it means uh, that as well, but we're talking about grouping symbols like brackets or little squiggly brackets like this. Any kind of uh, uh, notation that is grouping numbers together like parentheses, that's where we're gonna start, okay? Now, of course, there can be more than one set of parentheses in a prom. In this particular prom, there's obviously just one. So that's uh, what P stands for. E stands for exponent. So if I have a power like two to the fourth power, this little four is an exponent. This entire thing is a power. So you want to think of E as powers, things like two to the fourth. We're going to want to do those next. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing is a group. We're going to do M and D or D 
or M. This is a very confused part of the order of operations. So M stands for multiplication, D st uh, stands for division. So what you want to be uh, looking at here is from left to right. Okay, you want to do whatever occurs from left to right. So if we see multiplication, then division, that's what we want to do. And of course, in our problem, that's what we have. But if you see division and then multiplication, then you're going to want to do division first. Okay, again, you're looking at the problem uh, from left to right. And then we have A and S, which stands for addition and subtraction. And we're going to do it the same way as multiplication and division from left to right. Okay, so this is what you need to keep in mind when you have a problem that has all sorts of uh, operations going on. And technically, the directions to this problem could be something like simplify the numeric expression, right? Numeric expression. Here, uh, this big old thing is trying to express one number. What is that number? Well, this is what we want to try to do. We want to simplify this problem down into one value. And we're going to do that by following the order of operations PEMDAS. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started now. Uh, if you forget what PEMDAS is, just write that down on a piece of paper here and you kind of follow me through this problem. Okay, so PEMDAS is what's the first uh, um, uh, letter here? It's PEM, uh, P, not a PEM, uh, PEMDAS, right? So uh, the first thing I'm going to be like, okay, are there any parentheses? Clearly there are parentheses right there. So what I want to do is go inside those parentheses and start working. Now, uh, this particular problem has a set of parentheses. Some problems do not have uh, parentheses. Other problems actually have more than one parentheses. In other words, I can have brackets here, and this problem can continue. So you want to work to the innermost parentheses, okay? And uh, another little comment here is, you know, this problem that I'm doing is kind of a basic problem when it comes to the order of operations. You really need to get good at this. So you want to challenge yourself by doing more challenging problems. But anyways, we do have a set of parentheses, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to focus on what's inside of the parentheses first. Okay, so we have 8 times 4 divided by 16, so that's what we're going to be thinking about next. Are there any powers inside the parentheses? No, there isn't. Is there any multiplication and division? Yes, there is. And now we're going to be thinking, what comes first from left to right? Well, uh, multiplication does, right? 8 times 4. So that's what we're going to be doing next. All right, so now we have this problem, 5 divided by uh, 8 times 4 divided by 6. We haven't even done anything. We're just kind of reviewing in our mind where to start. So now we're going to start with 8 times 4. Okay, so 8 times 4, I know all of you are experts in multiplication. 8 times 4 is 32, so that's the answer. Now, when you're doing this work, just take it one step at a time. Okay, there's a couple different reasons for that. One, so you can uh, track and audit yourself. If you really want to know how to um, increase the probability of you getting the correct answer in mathematics, it's by taking a step and double-checking yourself. You want to be a little bit like you know, suspicious of your work, <clears throat> excuse me, and you want to grade yourself. You'll be like, okay, did I make a uh, mistake? Where's the error? Because uh, I can guarantee you, you will catch errors, right? So you can only check yourself if you're being neat and organized and taking one step at a time. All right, so 8 times 4, 32. So now we have 32 divided by 16 squared. All right, but we're not done with the parentheses, right? There's still stuff to do inside the parentheses. So pretty clearly, we have to take care of 32 divided by 16, which, of course, is going to be 2. Right? 32 divided by 16 is 2. So this is where we're at right now. So we have 5 divided by 2 squared. Now, there is, we still have our parentheses, but there's nothing more, uh, to, uh, there's nothing else to do inside the parentheses. So now you can start looking on the outside of those parentheses. And what do we have? We have a power, right? So let's go back to PEMDAS. So at this point, we took care of everything inside the parentheses. So now we're looking, are there any powers? Yes, indeed we do. So we're going to address this right uh, next to squared. But uh, before we do that, I'm going to ask you to address subscribing to my channel and possibly hitting that notification button. If you're getting value from my content, uh, you know, it really does help me out if you subscribe. I've been on YouTube for quite some time and I'm a consistent 
uh, you know, I post consistently pretty much every day. And I'm trying to cover a wide range of math topics from basic to advanced uh, because I just love teaching math that much. So if you're getting some sort of value out of my videos, please consider subscribing. That little gesture goes a long way for me. But let's continue on with the problem. Okay, so here we have 5 divided by 2 squared. So this is what we need to figure out next. So 2 squared means what? It means 2 times 2, right? So 2 times 2, of course, is 4. So now we have 5 divided by 4, and there's only one other left, uh, one other operation left to do, and that's, of course, division. So 5 divided by 4, we want to express that as a fraction. You just don't want to be like, well, I don't know what to do here. Well, this is 5 divided by 4. This is uh, perfectly okay. But if you felt like, hmm, 5 divided by 4, uh, if you need to go like, you know, if you're thinking this, that's okay as well, okay? But if you just said, well, I'm going to write this as a fraction, this is the most ideal way. But if you uh, wrote this as division like that, that's okay as well, right? So you just did division. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Four goes into five one times. One times four is four. Isn't arithmetic so much fun, right? Then you uh, have one as a remainder, so you can think of this as one and one fourth. This is what we call a mixed number fraction. So four times one is four plus one is five or four. So this is a mixed number fraction. This is a proper fraction. And if I write something like this, two thirds, this, well, this is a proper fraction. This is an improper fraction, excuse me. When the denominator, okay, this is the bottom number in a fraction, is bigger than the numerator, this is what we call a proper fraction. When the numerator, this top number, is larger than the bottom number, this is an improper fraction. And these type of fractions we can write as mixed numbers by doing the, this division like so. But I'm going to uh, suggest that you don't do this, okay? Uh, you know, I'll just give you a little bit of insight from grading maybe possibly 10 million uh, quizzes. Well, not that many, but you get it, right? So I've had countless uh, students, they'll have the right answer, five-fourths, but then they'll go ahead and turn that into a mixed number, and they'll give me like one and one-third, all right? So the answer is one and one-fourth. They'll turn in this answer, and then when they see that they got like minus 10, they'll be very upset, and they'll be like, what are you doing, Mr. Math Teacher? I had the problem right. Look, it was five-fourths, but I said, well, yes, you did, but you gave me this answer. And in fact, you did it right. You had this answer, but when you did this division, you wanted to be a math superhero, you made an error. Okay, so unless you are asked to do this, you need to know how to do it, okay? You, know, you need to know how to write uh, improper fractions as mixed numbers. I'm not saying to do that. What I'm trying to say is don't volunteer to do that, okay? But when it comes to fractions, what you do need to do is make sure your fractions are fully simplified. So five, if, for example, if you have uh, 50 over 40, you wouldn't write your final answer there. You must write it uh, fully reduced, five over four. Okay, so hopefully all these little tips are going to, you know, help you out on tests and quizzes. Believe me, you know, as a math teacher, you know, you teach for many, many, many years. You see the mistakes, okay? You see the errors. You see the trends. So these are the type of things that I try to emphasize in my videos. So you're going to be getting a lot of experience from, you know, uh, you know, from a math teacher's perspective, right? It's not just someone that knows math, okay? It's someone who sees you know, uh, you know, the common errors. And I'm pretty sure I was making these mistakes way back in the good old 1970s and 80s as well. But never feel bad about making a mistake in math, okay? Uh, making a mistake is normal, and that's the way you learn. What you don't want to do is get stuck, okay, and not correct those mistakes. And the only way to do that is th uh, through practice and great instruction. So if you need help with the order of operations, let me give you a couple of quick suggestions. One, check out my Math Foundations course. I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. Also, my pre-algebra course is an excellent starting point. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with this as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.